What's up, everybody? Root of the Null here again. We're still looking at Pygame and Python and doing lots of really cool stuff. In the last video, we were looking at some window functions. We were able to set the caption or the title of the window, retrieve it, that sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that print statement. And uh, in this video, let's let's see what we've got here. Let's see what we got here. We got this... We got this black screen. It says subscribe, and I mean, you should do that, but... <laughs> why is it just a black screen? What if what if we don't like black? Well, hey, <laughs> I don't know if I should really be saying that on the internet. <laughs> you know, I'm just joshing. Alright, um, what if we were able to fill the screen with something different? What if we were able to use a different color? Well, let's think about this. Pygame uses colors with the typical RGB values. And, you know, red, green, and, and blue. And that's usually a tuple, or at least a list, or any kind of multiple storage way of keeping track of all of these values. And they could be zero. They could be anywhere in the range from zero to 255. 255 means the full amount of that color. Zero means absolutely no amount of that color. Normally, if you're used to this, white is what equals all the presence of all colors, and black is the presence of absolutely no colors. No colors have any have any value in this case. That's that's black. Okay, so we can use this in Pygame. What if we went ahead and you know created that white variable? That's just a tuple of the of these three values: two five five for red, two five five for green, and two five five for blue. Now, what we do is we fill the screen, or fill the window, with this color. And I'm using the word fill because that's kind of a key word for us here. That's actually the function name that we use to entirely fill up a surface. And um, we're going to get into surfaces very much later, or at least we're going to be discussing them more and more. But uh, the, this display function set mode that actually returns a surface, and a surface is really the, the area of the screen or a portion of, of coordinates and pixels that you're actually using to draw stuff on. So there is a function, pygamesurface.fill, that will fill the surface with a solid color, in this case, white. Awesome. Okay, so now let's run this and, and, and watch it in action. And uh, let's set it up. What the heck? It's still black, right? What is going on here? All right, let's take a look at the code a little bit more. It's it's testing for events, um, and that's all. We need to be able to update the screen. We need to be able to update the display and actually see and keep track of the changes that are happening within the code and in the program. So. This introduces a whole new function for us that is crucial, that is absolutely important. It's called pygame.display.update. And now, what this function will do, let's check it out in the documentation, go over to display here, go over to update, and it says updates portions of the screen for software displays. This function is like an optimized version of pygame.display.flip, and if you check that out, it does kind of the same thing, updates the full display surface to the screen. It, it updates the contents of the entire display. Well, update, eh, it works a little bit better than that. Flip is very, very resource intensive, or at least that's the idea that we get from reading this. This display.update is an optimized version for software displays. It displays, or at least it allows only a portion of the screen to be updated instead of the entire area. If no argument is passed, it updates the entire surface area like PyGameDisplay.flipped. So we can keep track of what it is that we're changing, but for now, we're using just no arguments, PyGameDisplay.flip. You can pass the function anything, um, and that sort of thing. So it just updates the screen for us. Alright, so we can have this happen once, right? Since all we're doing is just changing the color of the screen, and we run that, right? And now we get our white background. Sweet! We filled the screen, we filled the window with that white color that we created. Awesome. It's also a good idea to run this function kinda all the time, whenever whenever there may or may not be a change in the program. So that's why it's good to have it also in the while loop. You see this while indentation here? While it's running, if there are any changes, you should always kinda update and make make the changes accordingly. You should update accordingly make the accommodations that you need to. Thanks, Python. <laughs> Alright, so 
now let's keep track of the colors because we were talking about that earlier. White is a good thing to note, but what if we've got? Uh, oh, wait a heck! I was I was just browsing at the at the documentation, and you know I saw up here in the list of cool things that Pygame does, color. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right. So um yeah, Pygame has support for a color object or kind of a color class that will keep track of these red, green, and blue values. You can keep track of them by getting or setting them within the object, and then you can also keep track of the alpha value when you have transparency. I'm not going to get into that anytime soon, but it is something that you can do. You can also use the um, cyan, or cyan, I don't know, honestly know how to pronounce that word, uh, magenta and yellow representations of the color. You can change the hue, saturation, value. You can change the H H S L A. I don't. I don't really know what that one's for. You can normalize or turn the normalize RGBA value. You, there's so much you can do with this this object. So for now, we're gonna store all of the colors we create in pygame.color objects. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and create a new file that contains some of these, so we actually have a bit more color options that aren't taking up space in our, in our code. So what if I create a new window? I'll save this as um colors.python. I actually have a file already in there and I'm just gonna have to replace it. But I'm sure you know what we're doing. We're just gonna go ahead and create some colors in there. And keep in mind they are pygame.color objects. So if we use white, we can also use black. I'll move the mouse out of the way. might be a good idea to use gray in case we ever need it. That's going to be 90. In my case, you can obviously use whatever values you'd like. Let's do another one for silver. I'll use 200 so it'll be kind of light. Let's use blue. Actually, no, we should start with red. You can go through this pattern for all of the other colors or anything else that you might like. It'd be, it might be a good idea to um, look up online some common HTML color values or things that you normally, or at least that are kind of like defaults. Those are good to keep track of. And uh, for now, we're just going to keep with these. Really, really simple. We do actually, since we're using the Pygame module in the file, we do need to import Pygame up at the top here. Don't forget to do that. I almost did, and um, okay, that's great. Now in our code, we can go ahead and, from colors, import everything, and window fill.white will work just fine for us. We can even use red. Let's just see how it looks. Going to be very, very bright. Bam! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> All right, and uh, let's check it out with just silver. So, oh, <laughs> pasted a little bit too much in there. Got an error. Silver looks okay. Kind of a light gray. And then white is uh, what we'll use and honestly what we'll just keep. So that looks just fine, like the way we had it before. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's review. We've learned all about Pygame colors. Uh, we learned all about the fill function. We learned all about the display update and display flip. We learned a little bit about surfaces. Man. What a great video! <laughs> what a great tutorial! <laughs> cool. I'm having too much fun with this, guys. Thank you for watching, thank you for keeping up with me, and, um, whatever. <laughs> I guess I'll see you in the next tutorial. Toodaloo!